It looks like a restaurant kitchen, but it is an advanced research institute on human nutrition in Aberdeen, Scotland. Food is served to study volunteers, not customers. And for this particular study, dishes were cooked up to make volunteers eat less, but still feel happily full. The types of foods that I was eating, um, I found that they were keeping me fuller for longer, so I wasn't thinking about snacking and stuff like that. So, so that's been the, the big things. The study is the cornerstone of a European Union research project aimed at identifying natural food ingredients that regulate appetite by enhancing satiation and reducing hunger, thus fighting against overeating and obesity. We're talking about protein ingredients, we're talking about herbal ingredients, types of carbohydrates, resistant starches, and we're also talking about soluble fibres as well. And we'll use these in a variety of foods. We'll use them in baked goods, uh, biscuits, fruit smoothies, yoghurts, uh, sodas, uh, waters. So there's a range of products that people could easily incorporate into their daily eating pattern. <laughs> Volunteers in the project are offered three meals a day during 52 days. In exchange, they let researchers know how their bodies react to the mysterious ingredients added to the recipes. Researchers want in particular to understand how those ingredients affect appetite control, fat evolution and weight management in the volunteers' bodies. And the first results are promising. It certainly worked well, yeah, it did keep you full. Your plate was full, it saved you snacking in between meals and it certainly worked, worked for me with the weight that I lost, yeah. The researcher's next step is to try to understand how some food ingredients, like soluble fibres, fill us up quicker than others. Meticulous laboratory work has already provided some tips. Some of these fibres um, will make you feel full just because of their physical presence in the gut, the sort of bulking effect, and there are pressure sensors in, in there that that tell us that. Um, there's also a hypothesis around the products from the microbial activity, that some of the acids that the microbes pr uh, produce um, interact with receptors on the gut surface um, and elsewhere in the body. And that can affect hormone production, and some of those hormones are ones that are known to affect how hungry we feel. <laughs> But the final expected outcome of the research is not only to fight against overeating and obesity in Europe, scientists say. They also hope that their knowledge will eventually help them to contribute to the development of innovative foods and novel food processing technologies to be offered to European consumers very soon. We're starting to model what ingredients actually do within the human gut work that back through the laboratory and then take the foods back out into the clinical trials and use commercial partners to produce products that people would really want to consume on a day-to-day -day basis. Otherwise, the foods would be useless. They would have no practical value. This food was very, very nice. Tasted really, really good. There was no um, lack of flavour or alteration in the textures or anything like that. It was, it was very enjoyable. So if in the future there was a product developed that looks the same and feels the same, then of course I would be willing to, to try it. And researchers hope to see these innovative, satiating foods being served on Europe's dinner tables from 2016.